first tonight, calls are mounting to expel Michelle Moan from the House of Lords after the lingerie tycoon admitted to lying about a £60 million Covid deal. Conservative peer now says she does stand to benefit from the lucrative contract awarded to her husband's company, PPE MedPro, by the government during the pandemic. She's previously denied links to the company, which is now under investigation by the National Crime Agency. I wasn't trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes and I regret and I'm sorry for not seeing straight out, yes, I am involved because DHSC, the NHS, um, the Cabinet Office, they all knew of my involvement, but I didn't want the press intrusion. Well, despite admitting false and lying, Moan believes it's all a bit of a storm in a teacup. I don't honestly see there's a case to answer. Um, I can't see what we've done wrong. Um, Doug and the consortium have simply delivered a contract, a delivery contract of goods. But after everything, you can't see what you've done wrong when you've admitted today that you lied to the press and That's by extension you lied to the public. You, Laura, saying to the press not I'm not involved to protect my family, can I just make this clear? It's not a crime. Well, Lords and Ministers are now calling for the Baroness to be booted out of the Upper Chamber, with Lord Callanan saying he hopes she won't return. The Prime Minister weighed in this afternoon saying he takes the issue incredibly seriously. But Moan hit back on social media writing, what is Rishi Sunak talking about? They all knew about my involvement from the very beginning. Well, Cabinet Minister Michael Gove is also facing questions after being name-checked by the Baroness. So I said that was that she was saying it was a bit of a storm in a teacup. Obviously, I meant to say C cup there, boom, boom. Um, <laughs> this is getting a real head on it now. I mean, obviously, we all remember a couple of years ago, it was a really big story. And then she, by lying, along with her husband, managed to dampen down that story because the journalists who were saying she is involved in this case, she is, she is going to make money, albeit secondhand, from, from her husband, and she and her husband kept saying this interview, we lied about it because <coughs> we were advised to lie about it mm. by our legal team. Mm. Well, I'm sorry, get, get different lawyers if that's the calibre of lawyers. Yeah. Well, exactly. and, take, and take a bit of responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. If that's the advice that you're going to get, then you're absolutely right. You need to get different advice because it's wrong. Lying, particularly when you are afforded that position of privilege, is wrong. Yeah. In addition to that, we're talking about a percentage profit margin of 30% on something which was created when the country was in desperate need. So, of course, one has to separate the money element because everybody, you expect them to make a decent profit when they're making something in any shape or form. You also expect prices to rise when there is really short supply. Fine, I get it. But when you have a fast track government system that is no longer checking contracts in the way that they normally would, when you have a system where, for example, why is she trying to keep her family and her children out of this? Why? Because they know that this is super profit. They know that 60 million quid on a, pro on a contract value of just over 200 million pounds is an extraordinary amount of money for basically buying something off the internet and supplying it in, in the most extraordinary way. So there is more to be done here, and also I think it does completely undermine the House of Lords, that you have a position of privilege of power, you have a position where you are extremely wealthy anyway, and that allows you to get more contracts, to make more money off a, a really terrible situation for the nation. I and I'm all up for people making money and, and having great business. This isn't great this is, business. This, is, this, is, this is, is nothing compared to some of the Lords and ladies. Correct, it's all not been the only jail. one. I mean, getting chucked out of the House of Lords is quite a feat. Uh, <laughs> if you don't murder someone, you can pretty much stay in. Yes. Uh, but uh, I would suggest that she's probably on her way out. And, uh, you know, there's an old adage, when you're in a hole, stop digging. And exactly. she keeps on digging. Exactly. And uh, nobody is believing her. Once you lie once, why should anyone believe you again? And uh, in terms of this actual contract, these VIP lanes, the government's managed to lose about 15 billion quid of our money, yes. uh, sort of doling out money uh, to their mates. And this is a classic example. Yeah, I think James and Kevin are absolutely right. This is completely indefensible. And the woman has lied throughout. 
Um, and it's a, t it's a tissue of lies. She's saying, oh, we weren't trying to pull the wool over your eyes. Oh, but it's not a crime to lie to the media. And I was just trying to protect my family. Well, you do have, you do have a responsibility when you're in a position such as a baroness. Is that not an honour? I mean, I think this utterly discredits the House of Lords, which is anyway, the honour system is a completely corrupt and broken system. By the way, I mean, by the way, who appointed it to the House of Lords? It's our old friend, that uh, Master of Foreign Policy, brilliant Prime Minister, Lord, David Cameron. Lord, Lord Cameron. Another one of his... Hideous mistakes. Well, the thing is, I've, I've often said that the Lords in its current state is an abomination and it's completely unjustifiable. I'm all mm. for sort of having a second chamber that's a bit more far, a bit more removed from the, the kind of nitty gritty of daily politics and having expertise mm. that you can rely on. But this is completely, the current size and scope of it is completely unjustifiable. And I think this just highlights th that, that fact. Can I just um, point out that of the four billion pounds that was spent on um, PPE, 2.6 billion of it was inadequate because a lot of it was, was going to be expire after like a couple of years. Yes. So just the scale of wastage here is, is completely ludicrous. And also the, the, the government got their specifications wrong and, and, and that has resulted in a huge amount of wasted. But also, I, I, I need to understand, and, and maybe this is the best forum to find out, has she done a worse job than Prince Andrew in an interview situation. Oh, yeah, I think, well, I think she's a she, is, yeah. Yeah. she has bested yeah. Prince Andrew. This interview was actually worse. It made Prince Andrew's yeah. car crash interview look almost. I mean, was this a multiple train watch. wreck? It was. It was a multiple. Look, can train we, can we point it? out the, the irony here of the Labour Party feigning righteous indignation over these PPU contracts? Yes, we're all outraged. But when that when the situation happened, they weren't calling for fiscal discipline. They weren't saying actually let let the government vet. Yeah, they were saying you're lock, lock us down longer and harder. Do what you need to do to get the NHS what but it that's, needs. But that's that's an interesting point because of course Wes Streeting um, was out and about yesterday, and he was saying and making it very clear that the Labour Party does think this could be an election winner or a vote winner for them you know they're setting up this covid um co corruption czar and so on and i wonder i mean i think it's got much bigger better chance now of being something of a vote winner now that michelle mona has pushed it back oh, into, yeah. the, she into was the front pages but she was already a tycoon this is greed this is greed pure and simple isn't it? it's not very complicated yeah. okay it's just about more money. And, this, and I don't, and I don't people have a problem, were dying. People yeah, no, were absolutely. dying. And we needed PPE, apparently. Of course, but I don't have a problem, for example, during COVID, there were firms who they did not money. make, for example, hand sanitizer. They made whiskey. And that's why you had sort of whiskey flavored, you know, or smelling uh, hand sanitizer. Because we desperately needed it and they did it. And, and you know, it might have cost a bit more. But that I think there are genuine cases where companies up and down the country went over and above. But let's also not forget the people and the companies who donated either their time or their materials for free to try and deal with this problem. And we have this group of individuals who were just rinsing it, Absolutely. not accepting it. As you said earlier, you know, once you lie once, the chances of people believing you again diminish greatly. And this woman or this company, MedPro uh, PPR, uh, spent a fortune uh, making their own documentary yes. to exonerate <laughs> uh, Michelle Moan and her husband, Doug exactly. Barron. And it did not. Uh, and then people who were in it found out yeah. that she'd funded it. And they're furious, these experts saying they were duped. And then, uh, as I say about digging a hole when you're in, uh, digging deeper when you're already in a hole, she sends out this tweet today. Baroness Bra, give it up. Yeah. Give it up. Just go away. Nobody believes you.